So despite the 18 points. Right, a, a donut uh, didn't feed the others. That's one thing they want to get. Get him involved on the offensive end, contributing right away. I think that was on Blair. And, and they have been unable to get the ball inside the Samuels to do the damage. Maybe the driving will help. Yeah, but, but if you're Samuels, Billy, you, you have got to take that ball right at him as well. Mm -hmm. Ball was on Blair, his first. And he's gone to the bench for a moment. Is that Brad right? Wanamaker with the ball off the bench. He's in trouble. And Jamie Dixon got a timeout. Actually, it turned out to be a bad break for the Panthers because Wanamaker got it out of that double. And it looked like Sam Young was the... Well, Louisville, under Rick Pitino, of course, throughout Rick Pitino's career, he's used the press in various forms of pressure to his advantage. Yeah, and it's not always the traps and the turnovers. Sometimes it's speeding a team up. They're really good sometimes with the soft press, Billy, milking the shot clock. But I think particularly at home, this press tonight has got to be able to energize these 20,000 people here and create some easy opportunities to score. It's all about scoring, though. They've got to have these dead ball situations or score. And in the deep end, you'll just see here, not protecting the basket, as Sean, as you mentioned. Look at this. It would have been a layup had not the timeout been called. But it could have been a violation, too, in the backcourt or close to it. That's why Dixon called it. Brad Wanamaker to Levance Fields. Gilbert Brown has also come in off the Pittsburgh bench. He wears number 11. This is Sam Young. Had it swatted by Earl Clark. And then Brown knocked it out of the hands of Sosa, but got called for a reach-in foul. Boy, you can taste that one. Uh, not too much distance can be gained against the big guy. you got to get away from him. And that's good scouting report defense. We talked about that. Sam Young loves to operate in that high post area. Earl Clark, Earl Clark smelled that and came, came out of nowhere. First foul on Gilbert Brown, the fourth team foul against the Panthers. 16-0 for the year, winning by an average of more than 19 points per game. Their closest game was a six-point win at Rutgers, but this is just the second-ranked team they've played this year. The other one was Georgetown, an impressive 16-point win on the road for Pitt. Now this Clark is, missed the turnaround. And, and Sean, a good play because they had the mismatch on the switch. Clark didn't go at him, he went away. Fields dribbled to an open spot, missed the open jumper. Brown on the offensive glass. Pitt rebounds 42% of its misses. So many second chance opportunities, and Fields capitalized that time. And how unselfish are they? Yeah, they give it to a guy in a better position to drill it. A give back by Young. And a timeout called by Louisville. All Pittsburgh here in the first six plus minutes. Rick Pitino's team 12 and 3. They've won four in a row the last two. Narrow wins against ranked teams at Villanova. Then Monday night here in overtime against Notre Dame. But they're in trouble early. He's gone deep to his bench. Kyle Couric, who has not played recently in the last couple of games. In off the bench, number 14, a freshman. Nice steal. And go strong now, Jenny Delavay. Send it in. Terrence Jennings and getting increased minutes off the bench and making the most of them. You better lace your sneakers up when you play for Rick Petito. Uh, you've got to be ready. You never know when he's going to play you. And there's that example of that pressure getting the crowd into this game. They need more of that. First turnover, correct, Sean? Yes. One turnover so far for Pitt against this disruptive Louisville defense. Young found Brown coming in from the weak side. Fields is open again. Missed the three. Rebound down to Earl Clark. Nice hands. Playing the pass tonight beautifully. Gilbert Brown. Well, Terrence Jennings. Rick Pitino has really started to gain confidence in the freshman from Sacramento. Didn't play him early in the year. And in fact, very similar situation to Earl Clark's freshman year, where he sat first part of that year. Earl Clark's been a mentor to this young guy. Gave him great minutes Monday night, Sean, didn't he? He did indeed. He's seen big minutes the last two games against Villanova and Notre Dame. Played 19 quality minutes against the Irish. A little bump on Ashton Gibbs again. Sosa trying to aggressively drive into that Pittsburgh defense. The architect Jamie Dixon. 148 wins. He's already third all time in Pittsburgh history in coaching wins. 
Uh, they did such a great job defensively. They switched and then exchanged, recovered. I, I think what they like to do is positions one through four, they have no problem switching. They feel those big guys, bigs particularly, can move his feet young. That is a small lineup right yes. now for the three guards on the floor with Kirk, Preston Knowles, and Sosa. Earl Clark, strong drive, defended well by Biggs, but it got tipped out to Sosa. Shot clock did not reset. Kirk, that's his game. The outside shot, Jennings, and there's Kirk sneaking in. Wow. Hey, Watt, the youngster from Evansville is a better athlete than people think. He'll, he'll develop into a really good role player through the years. Wanamaker with a great look, and Jamie said he's been playing better. Second Pittsburgh turnover. Sosa again to the bucket. Jennings missed the follow. And then Brown turned it over. Sosa was fouled. And Sosa almost engaged that high tower in an embrace. Wow. He could get locked up for that. Hey, this is the kind of energy you want to play with if you're the Cardinals. And it's Kirk, an unlikely source off the bench. Played fewer than one minute total in their last two ball games. About 50% so far. This is a blockbuster Saturday of college basketball on ESPN. It ends with Bill's favorite part, the nightcap in the ACC. Coverage begins at 8. The college game day driven by State Farm. And as Jay Billis insists that we mentioned, starring Jay Billis with some other guys, as Jay wrote onto the card. Then at 9, it's Miami against North Carolina and Tyler Hansborough. Saturday primetime presented by DirecTV on ESPN at 9 Eastern time. Already some spirited action. Syracuse bounced back from the win earlier this week. Uh, the loss, rather, earlier this week at Georgetown with a win at home today against Notre Dame. Oklahoma survives against Texas A&M. I envy you, Fran. You know why? He doesn't know you that well, so he didn't take you down like he took Jay and myself. You know, Jay got the night off. He's so excited about being away from Sean. Preston Knowles with the follow of a Sosa miss. Right now, Louisville's beating Pitt in its game. They're getting the offensive rebound. And this is the, what they have to do. Become frenetic. Get into the mix a little bit. Get the emotion and energy charged up. Ron Blair is back in the game for Pittsburgh. A high-low try, but Jennings airmailed Earl Clark. I don't know if that's his strength, find the entry. Tough for young play people to make that play. And what's so hard is Pittsburgh's got five blue shirts inside that three-point line. Not a lot of room for error. And yeah, he's going to get a little rest, too, as Samuels comes back on the floor. Jennings and Kirk go out. Samardo Samuels and Terrence Williams, two of the starters, back in now. For the Cardinals, bringing the full court pressure with Andre McGee on the ball on LeVance Fields. And this is the go-go group. These two guards get after it. Knowles and McGee. So you look at that shot clock. They don't get anything out of the full court pressure, but they do milk, milk about 12 seconds off that 35. But see, I think Pitt likes that. Yeah. I mean, if they don't have the easy, they're going to... Oh, not a good look there. Had an open jumper as well. Wanamaker, who we mentioned, uh, they see he's playing much better. Andre McGee left alone, missed the three. Nice. Williams whips it underneath, and Clark stuffs it. And as Billy mentioned earlier, when you score, you get a chance now to set up that white press, and they'll come and double if they get somebody out of control. Well, it's a nice asset when your forward can make plays like Williams does. Wanamaker's been a little shaky with the ball. Young got Clark in the air, went all the way to the bucket to score. Save that. Big East basketball right there, huh? You know, everybody in the league knows he's going to pump fake and drive, and he's still got Clark in the air. Nice denial. But Samuel stayed with it after Blair flicked it away for a moment. Wanamaker trying to push it all the way to the goal, and he's fouled by Terrence Williams. Boy, not a good job of containing the bounce there. Should have pinched from the wing. Watch this, Billy. Everybody scouting report in the Big East knows that Sam Young, watch the pump fake. That gets Clark into the air, allows him to get to the rim and the finish. A good no call under the basket there. As the defender faded a little bit from the contact. Pat Driscoll at Hightower, Brian O'Connell, the officials. Wanamaker at the line, sophomore from Philadelphia. 
As you mentioned, Bill, Jamie Dixon, we asked him before the game, other than the obvious stat stuffers, who are the guys playing well? He said Wanamaker is the first name out of his mouth. Averaging nine points and four rebounds per game over the last four ball games. Twin brother Brian played at Central Connecticut transferring out. You know, I can't think of a program that brings guys along like they do in the country. You know, don't play much maybe the first year, a little bit more the second. And as you mentioned, not the McDonald's guys. Yeah. So it's a development project. They've got a keen analysis when it comes to talent. And I think what happens is they play, and for that reason, they play with a relatively low ego. Nobody's looking to skip out after a year. Don't we wish that happened after oh, a year? Come on now. <laughs> Williams through the contact. Was fouled by Gilbert Brown. And I think demonstrative of what you guys were talking about, five of the last nine most improved players of the year in the Big East Conference have been pit players. They get players who aren't necessarily McDonald's All-Americans. They always seem to have great senior, junior leadership from within the playing ranks. Those newcomers can play behind veterans, learn both on and off the court, and develop their skills under Jamie and his terrific staff. And you know what jumps out at me is you look at the high schools they come from, you know, places like South Kent and, and Roman Catholic and obviously Seton Hall Prep, places like that. Pretty good program. Yeah, yeah, you know you're going to get well coached and understand team play. Nice entry pass by Brown. This player couldn't finish it off. The other thing about Sean is the competition in practice is extraordinary for guys to develop. The freshman sophomore mm -hmm. playing against established veterans in the Big East. And this is one program. You play hard all the time. You defend or you don't play. Down by 10 with just more than nine minutes remaining in the first half here at Freedom Hall. I don't think Louisville can win this game without a big night from Samardo Samuels. He, at number one, he's got to go at Dewan Blair, try to pick up that second foul. But he's the only consistent inside scorer they have. And I think when you play a team this tough, Bill, you've got to go at them. I, I don't know if he's capable at this point with Blair. I mean, he's not getting the touches. So he's going to have to screen and be active, get him away from the rim, I think. And he did it against Heron Gody, but so far unable. Pretty. That's what I think they got to do. Yeah. Get to the rim. Terrence Williams, the senior from Seattle. Rick Pitino told us before the game that he thinks he's going to have a 10-year career in the NBA. Can really do it all except shoot, and he believes his shooting will improve at the next level. Patient, and as you noted, under 20 again, Fran, but they end up with good shots. Jermaine Dixon handed it off to Blair. Bounce pass too strong for Biggs to handle. They started out well protecting the ball, but very quickly they're up to five turnovers. You see that little flare screen? That creates the open side. Good hard drive by Terrence Williams coming off that monster game Monday night. Boy, were you guys having fun. <laughs> he had fun. A little hole, not a good one by Dixon. I yeah, didn't like the call from Ed Hightower. That is the eighth team foul already against Pitt. And a lot of times when you see Pittsburgh in action, the question is, how is the game called? Because they like to be physical when they're on defense with the other team's cutters. If it's called tightly, that works obviously against them. And counter that with Louisville, if you call it close in the press, it hurts them. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting contrast of styles. There's the stat line Fran referred to Monday night in the overtime win against Notre Dame and that's on the heels of a game last Saturday against Villanova at Villanova 10 points 14 rebounds six is two steals so those are typical numbers that he's putting up near the top of the Big East in several statistical categories unbelievable this kid well rounded yep. triple double guy so when were you talking to us we threw that game a little late to you with Ron Franklin the other night hey we were enjoying watching it Louisville back within six and there's what you were talking about, Bill. How will they call fouls on Louisville's press? And the crowd didn't like that one. It's the first personal on Earl Clark and just the third team foul against the cards. Look at him on the ball here, Sean. I mean, he's got some weak span himself. And Biggs is going to have trouble seeing the floor. Everybody else fronting. Clark is 6'9", 225, long arms. Dixon pressured by McGee. Dixon dribbles through three yep. defenders and turned it over to Jerry Smith. That's got numbers. Oh. Love for Clark and a little too low. What are you doing? Come on, just get the two points. 
And what I love about Rick Pitino, I mean, a lot of guys would be mad at the miss. He wants them to get the press. Okay, you missed it. Let's just keep going. And what makes them dangerous is they have those two different presses. One with Clark on the ball on that 2-2-1, two, two, mm -hmm. changing up. And now another little brush foul called. Fourth team foul. And the first personal on Andre McGee. And it gets us to immediate timeout. Well, the press trying to pay dividends. They get the uh, first part, but don't finish the second. It's an oops instead of an alley-oop. 57 left in the first half here at Freedom Hall. Big Mondays continue on ESPN and ESPN2 with men's and women's number one teams in the nation in action. First at 7 East on ESPN. Catch two of the top teams in the Big East. Number eight, Syracuse, off the big win today against Notre Dame. Against number one, Pittsburgh. Rick Pitino told us before the game, I hope they're not number one when you have them Monday night. <laughs> and then at 7 East on ESPN2, Maya Moore leads number one, Connecticut. The women against the North Carolina Tar Heels and Jessica Breeland. It's Big Monday, presented by Bud Light, part of ESPN. And use campus connection on ESPN. You know, I'm watching the Qs today. If they play like that, they, they are final four serious. Rick Pitino told us before the game today he thinks they might be the best team in the Big East. Boy, they are impressive. He's got a little more on the bench he's developed. And he gotta, being Jim Beheim. And how about Monday night's matchup? Uh, LeVance Field, Johnny Flynn, two of the best point guards in the country. Not a good pass there by Biggs. And Pittsburgh yeah, squandered that 13-point lead because they've started to turn it over. Seven of them now. Williams fouled. And a chance to get Louisville within three. How about the hesitation? And then the blow-by. Put it on the deck. Powerful little slowdown. A little chicory, chicanery. And a little bit of a finger roll at the end. And this kid really has a great yeah. understanding of the game, doesn't well, he? And Rick Pitino said we would play him at the point. If we didn't need him so much inside, I think that's a heck of a compliment. Sure is. Ten points for Williams. Ashton Gibbs back in. The foul on Sam Young, his second. He goes to the bench. That's a big blow to Pittsburgh. And when we talked to Jamie Dixon before the game tonight, asked him any wrinkles today. He said, number one thing, don't let Williams drive. We saw what can happen yeah. when he does. And they worked today. At, look at this turnover in the backcourt. They worked hard on spacing and helping, but they're not doing it quite well. Well, and what you love about, I mentioned the changing presses off free throws. They'll throw that 1-2-1-1 one, one, one at you. And, Billy, you mentioned Clark is a bear at the top of that mm -hmm. press. Clark McGee, Samuel Smith, and Williams. Seven unanswered points for Louisville. And Clark missed the fadeaway. Samuels on the offensive glass. It's a one-point game. That's where he can do the damage. And he's not going to get touches. And Pittsburgh in the bonus. you got to go at them now. That's why Clark's fadeaway was ill-advised. To get it across. They are hesitant right now, Pitt. Not comfortable. Not looking over the top. And one thing Jamie said... We want to attack when we can. You can't let this everybody in the backcourt situation prevail. Two fouls on Smith. Five team fouls on Louisville. A 13-point Pittsburgh lead down to one. As soon as the national audience joined us at the end of the Michigan State game, Pittsburgh's been an entirely different team. So impressive before the national audience joined us. And they have struggled ever since. And you've got to go inside because they're really, there you go. And turn and kick. They are guarding the perimeter, Sean. It opens up passing lanes. You play three on three, it's a little easier than five on five. It's almost like a football team that's blitzing. You got to find those guys inside, but those two guards, Knowles and uh, McGee, are harassing Levance Fields right now. Second foul on Williams, so some early foul concerns on both sides. Tough shot by Ashton Gibbs. And it wouldn't go. Ripped down by Clark. And now a chance for Louisville to take the lead. Well, they got this on Blair, I think, on a pull down. Yep. Love the effort of Samaro Samuels. Yeah, you know what, Bill? He got doubled quickly. He got rid of it quickly. And that's a good sign. And that's two fouls on Blair. Young has two. Williams with two. 
for Louisville, so a lot of the stars in early foul difficulty. And the creativity, Fran, has been impressive. They haven't been able to dump it in and just get it easily. It's either creating off the dribble or finding an offensive rebound. Samuels ties it, and now he has a chance to give Louisville its first lead of the game as Gary McGee, the 6'10 center, comes in for Blair. And, and this is the point I was making, guys. You've got Pittsburgh in foul trouble. I would pound it inside now and play this next six minutes from inside out. Only take those threes if they come off of the floor of the offense. Full court pressure, and it has given Pittsburgh plenty of difficulty. Fields, one of the best ball handlers in the country, averaging just under five assists for every turnover. Biggs is in trouble, and they get another timeout. That's Valley. You pick it up over that timeline, you got two more defenders, the half-court line and the sideline. This is not pit basketball. They're not staying in the middle of the floor and posting up. They've got to get somebody to hit and make a decision. One of the things that Rick Pitino has always done in his press is, if you can get the big guy to handle it, watch how they double the ball out of Fields' hands. Now that means they're going to bring it up to court to Biggs, and Biggs gets caught with Clark, the sideline, and the half-court line. Three defenders and has to call a timeout. Well, we saw early in the game, fellas, Pittsburgh offering it, uh, operating at peak efficiency, really not having any difficulty with the Louisville pressure. Once they got into the bench, substituted, it seems like they lost their rhythm. And I think the other thing, Sean, is the press is more effective at home because of the energy of the crowd, and we've seen that. We, you don't see Pittsburgh rattled that often, Bill, mm -hmm. but they've been rattled the last five minutes. Got to score to press free throws or dead ball situations that energized them. It took them a while to get alive as well as the crowd and they are right in it and Pittsburgh's got to get their legs right now. And that you come back with Sosa. Herrick. And the problem is McGee up top is not going to make that shot. Dixon, they need it. They get it. Second big three of the ball game for the junior. Jermaine Dixon from Baltimore, Maryland, the younger brother of the former Maryland star Juan Dixon now in the NBA with the Wizards. JC kid too. That relaxed in the two-three zone right now, Sean. Yeah, you don't see this very often. Just a handful of times. As you're over at Rutgers earlier in the Big East season, they went to the zone with effectiveness. They're going to question the outside shooting now. Kyle Kirk back on the floor. Sosa, Knowles, shot clock seven. Sosa fades into an open jumper. What a rebound by Clark. Woo! Talk about wingspan. Staring that baby. Tenacious pressure again. Sosa. Look up. Fields with Sosa on his hip. Gets it over with about three to spare. Five minutes left, first half. Dixon. Rebound, Clark. This is the guy I've been waiting to see. Clark down the lane. Ray. Off it goes to Samuels for the dunk. Where have you been? It's interesting. The playmakers for Louisville are Clark and Williams. They're forwards. And Dixon called for using his free arm. Ed Hightower gesturing at him. And you hit the defender in the face. Dixon perplexed. It's his second personal. Well, it's yeah. not Earl the Pearl, but it's pretty, <laughs> a pretty maneuver by the big guy. Sleight of hand as well, Fred. Samuel, Samuel's a recipient. Now you're right, Bill. You watch Earl Clark, and sometimes he, he's maddening for a coach because he doesn't look like he's giving you everything. But he's gotten some big traffic rebounds tonight. Rick Pitino praising Clark for the game. So he's a very unselfish player. Sometimes needs to take more of it on himself. Sosa missed it. Kirk in among the big trees. And now Clark is fouled. And once again, it's doable. This kid has the whole package. I mean, you see what he's accomplished in these two minutes. It's extraordinary, his understanding and feel. It's just concentrating and getting to the glass, huh? 
Clark is a junior from Plainfield, New Jersey. McGee back in, Sosa goes out. Take a look at this now. Clark, number five, looks like he comes from Plainfield for that rebound. You know, they went zone and no one blocked Clark out. He went right down the corridor. He didn't come from Plainfield, he didn't have enough quarters. <laughs> <laughs> he had the toll tag, Billy. Nasir Robinson off the bench for Pittsburgh, trying to inbound it. Welcome to the game, Nasir. <laughs> they don't let you ease into it. You've got to look up and not... Uh, Fields, off it goes to Biggs. Well, they have sped him up now. They have certainly gotten the throttle going. Gibbs missed a runner. Gibbs, well, that's pit basketball, the attack mode at the offensive end. They haven't been able to get into their offense for several minutes. Puts Louisville over the limit. It's on Samardo Samuels, his first. Timeout. History dating back to the mid 50s, host of six Final Fours. 18th run of eight, nothing or better, executed by Louisville tonight. They've had a nine zip run. Well, they get you in bunches, no question about it, but you've got to be ready. I'm looking for Pitt to have a different alignment against the press. See if they make some adjustments after that timeout. You know, the tricky thing about this Louisville press is they kind of know when to come at you and trap you, and then sometimes they just leave you alone, Bill. So that's why you're right. You've got to stay alert and spread the floor. Ashton Gibbs, the freshman from West Orange, New Jersey, missed both free throws. He was 9 out of 11 for the year. 82 percent, but missed the pair. So Louisville with the ball and a three-point lead as we approach three and a half minutes left in the half. And back to man, and they go to the right guy. Nice dive. And Clark shot short. Two Panthers there for the rebound. And for once, they get to just leisurely bring it over half court. Nice move along the baseline, but Nazir Robinson, the freshman, missed it. I would put the pressure on Pittsburgh and keep going inside. And look at the matchup in there, the size difference by Sam. Nice hands by Fields. Now he races Sosa for it. Fields to the bucket. He's clever. Great Fields. adjustment. You know what's smart about that? Fields knows that Clark is a penetrate and kick guy, so he jumps right in the passing lane. You have to feel that would be very happy if they could just be right where they are now at the break, given that... They will have played a lot of time without both Blair and Young with two fouls apiece. And now a foul against Louisville turns it back over. This is what happens when you know a guy is very unselfish, like Earl Clark. Fields just smells it and jumps in that passing lane. And Knowles called for the moving screen. His first foul, the 18 foul. Lance Fields, senior from Brooklyn. Fractured a bone in his left foot last season, missed 12 games, then had a smaller fracture in the same foot late this summer. Handle that 2 2 1. They had people in the post area tied up a defender. Got to play him. Well, they let Fields walk right up to the three point line. He missed the open shot. Preston Knowles the other way. Sosa with Jennings in the lane all day long. Knowles missed the three. It's tipped up and rebounded on the second try by Jennings. And a foul on the floor. Mike they want to make it with a reach in down there. You can hear Gibbs pretty active with the hands. They're doing a great job on the offensive glass right now, Louisville. It's a good, it's a good bonus opportunity for Jennings after Wanamaker was called for his first foul. Good news, bad news for Louisville. He's a 20% free throw shooter. Two for ten. Easy to do the math. You doing that with Sal math again? Yes. <laughs> Easy for you. Bill's got the abacus out. College basketball continues this blockbuster Saturday. The nightcap from the ACC Miami and North Carolina. 9 Eastern time, Saturday primetime, presented, presented by DirecTV on ESPN. Coverage starts today with college game day driven by State Farm. Well, not surprisingly, the two misses by Jennings and a chance for the lead again for Pitt with two minutes to go in the half. And alert, too. You know the percentage. You're ready for the rebound. You think Denver will still be awake that late, by the way? Oh, did a break here on a deflection. That's going to bounce pass. Gibbs, the 
quick catch in shoot and he got the bounce and that's a three ball for Ashton Gibbs out of Seton Hall prep the same high school that sent Brandon Knight on the pit same high school coach Bob Farrell who's done such a great job through the years of course Brevin Knight not Brevin. a bad player there yep. as well Mel played at Seton Hall had a handicap of playing under me <laughs> but a great player nevertheless Brandon Knight is now on the pit bench as an assistant coach to Jamie Dixon Andre McGee a little along with the three Wanamaker the rebound and the push guys at the rim Wanamaker and Hightower the whistle from outside it's going to go against Louisville you know it's maddening if you're an assistant coach. They go through the scouting report. Stevie Massiello's yelling and screaming about Gibbs coming off the screen. And you only need a little bit of space to, to hurt the opponent. But that's what Pitt does execute, though. Yes, they do. They, they scream. They, they, you can know the play, and it doesn't matter. Knowles called for the foul. And Wanamaker misses the first of two. Number one Pittsburgh facing just its second ranked opponent of the year. They already have a win at Georgetown trying to win tonight at number 20 Louisville. Sean McDonough, Fran Fraschilla, Bill Raftery. Delighted to have you with us. Quite a history. It's brief. They've only played seven times. Six as co-members of the Big East. But most of the games are very close. One oddity, Pittsburgh has knocked Louisville out of the Big East tournament each of the last three Steph. years. Clark called for a walk. That's great defense. Talked about it before, Fran. They shut that driving lane down with assistance. Great pinch work. Sean, you made a great point. If you're Jamie Dixon right now, you just want to survive, get to, and if you have the lead, even, the, even better. No a long time without the two leading scores to Juan Blair and Sam Young. Each with two fouls. Want to make her a strong drive. Great job by Biggs to rip it away from Earl Clark. Some strength there, Sean. Crowd wanted a walk on Gibbs. Shot clock at 13. Under a minute to go in a very entertaining first half. Shaving up as another typical Big East battle. And without Young and Blair, Sean, this is impressive. Fields the miss. Biggs, the only Pittsburgh player underneath. Swatted it out, but he got called for the foul. Yeah, his follow through nailed one of the Louisville players. But considering the stars on the bench, this is pretty good for Pitt. Now, Jamie knew it would be a war. A great atmosphere for college basketball. The frenzied effort, particularly on the defensive end by Louisville. Second foul on Biggs. They're well into the double bonus. Pittsburgh's been called for 14 fouls here in the half, so it's Preston Knowles who barely grazed the front rim. Doesn't get to the line often. Just his eighth attempt of the year. He's five out of eight. And more importantly, making it now, Sean, so they can pressure. One out of two. The lead two for Pitt. They could take the last shot of the half. Louisville's going to make it difficult to do that. Lance always has the head up, though. Very clever. Great with the ball. Best assist to turnover ratio in Pittsburgh history. You think about all the terrific guards they've had. Offensive rebound. Pitts very good at the end of plays. Knowles knocked it into the backcourt. Seven seconds to go in the half. Fields had his pass blocked. Knowles with a chance for a heave. Off the mark. Spirited, huh? I am tired just watching the oh. first half. You need a break. They just get after you. Both clubs. Fields eight points, four assists, but Pittsburgh had trouble with the press. They committed ten turnovers. Here's Fran. Jamie, ten turnovers versus the press. What adjustments do you need to make? Ah, oh, well, we got to get uh, got to get our guys on the floor. We have a number of guys in foul trouble. I'm sure everybody has noticed. Um, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. We got to We uh, in, the back, in the front court made a couple. I thought we got our turnovers on the front court, and that's what we got to do a better job of. We'll, we'll be fine. We get everybody out. There. What's the one other thing you'll tell your team at halftime? Uh, stay out of foul trouble. Thanks. Good luck. At the half, Pittsburgh 32, Louisville 30. Let's send you back to the studio now. Ryan, Tom, and Doug, it's the UPS Halftime Report.
All right, John, thanks a lot. So a two-point game at the half. The number one team in the nation, Pittsburgh, on top. Ryan Burr, the coach Tom Brennan, and Doug Gottlieb. And wow, we get to this game, and Pitt jumps out to a 20-7 to lead on the road, undefeated, the number one team in the nation. And, Coach, you were screaming something. Well, you know what? First of all, let me say, that's a comeback that would have made Mickey Rourke proud, okay? They were down 20-7, to and I've always felt this way, Ryan. There's not a big school of thought along this, except for myself. But I'd much rather be up 18-12 to than I would 18-4 to if you're playing against somebody that you're comparable with. Because, especially if you're in their gym, now the crowd gets into it, they make a basket, they get a couple calls, and, and then they come roaring out. I'd rather just be nip, stealing away a little bit rather than ratting out somebody. Because you know it's going to even out. Uh, apparently. Okay? That's too much too soon argument. Too much too soon. You know what else hurts you when you have a really big lead? What else? When your best two players are on the bench with two fouls. Okay, let's call it like it is. Come when on, Pitt has their players, Technicalities. When you, when you take DeWan Blair an all-conference player, and Sam Young, a first-round draft pick off of a team, guess what? Louisville is every bit their equal. So the key to the second half is, as Gamie Dixon said, keep those guys on the floor, break through pressure, and Viola, you'll have yourselves another Well, we need to have Earl Clark be the good Earl Clark and not the evil twin Earl Clark. Well, that's, that's, Earl Clark. Be... that's just Earl Clark is the, a microcosm of, of what ills this Louisville team. When you see him play and he makes magnificent Watch plays, this. you Ow! realize, wow, he is just blessed with long arms, big hands. He can pass, he can block shots, he can change a game with his ability to rebound. But, you know, the last three times he touched the ball in the first half, he turned it over. Then he sets an illegal screen, which his teammate got called for a pick. So as good as Earl Clark can be, he can also kill you with his mental lapses. And that is, uh, on the micro level, what's wrong with this Louisville team on the macro level for a team that should be a top-five team in overall talent. 32-30 uh, at the half. Game as good as advertised. Looking forward to a great second half. They'll Freedom Hall. We're getting ready for the start of the second half. Pittsburgh, the number one team in the country, the perfect 16-0 record, leading Louisville 32-30. Sean McDonough, Fran Fraschilla, Bill Raftery. It's kind of a good news, bad news half, Bill, for Pitt. Started off well, then the foul trouble hit, and they're pretty fortunate to still be ahead. Uh, Blair and Young, approximately 10 minutes, they're both out of the game, and yet uh, this team sustained it. Conversely, Earl Clark, my goodness, what a great talent. If he shows up this half, Louisville may prevail. Fran, you talked about the many reasons why Louisville presses, and we saw a number of those examples lived out. Great energy, there's no doubt. They forced some turnovers, they forced some timeouts. Two of them, in fact, Jamie Dixon had to burn in that first half. You see they get Pitt's big guys handling the ball. Need to call one here. And then they also sped the game up. That's one of the un un underrated things about this pressure. You get a team like Pittsburgh, so under control, speed them up a little bit. But the problem for, for Louisville was didn't get a lot of offense off those turnovers. Pittsburgh ball to begin the second half. And Sam Young and Dewan Blair are on the court to begin the second half. Ten turnovers in that half for Pittsburgh. They didn't have any in the first six and a half minutes when they built a 13-point lead. As the turnover started to pile up, the lead went away. Nice kick to Jermaine Dixon. And the rebound by Earl Clark. He'll hand it off to Edgar Sosa, opening the half of Terrence Williams, Jerry Smith, and Samardo Samuels for Louisville. Well, if you're Louisville now, do you go inside and try to pick up that third one on Blair? Maybe go at Young off the bounce with Williams, pick up that third foul. All the aforementioned. <laughs> uh, no, I, I agree. Get inside to Samuels. Let him do some damage. Mark guarded by Biggs. Biggs brushed him. And we'll get called for the foul, and that's his third. And you noted as we looked at the stat sheet at the half, six Pittsburgh players had two fouls at the half. Oh, and that's why, unless I get a wide open jump shot, and Louisville went one for nine from behind the arc, I want to pound it at Pittsburgh right, right now and see if we can extend that foul trouble a little bit. And one thing that surprised me, Sean, is Pitt being out rebounded. I mean, they generally out rebound people by a margin of 11. That shows you some tenacious play by Louisville. For Louisville at 15 offensive rebounds. That's Pitt's game. Pitt had only six on the offensive glass, in part because Blair played only 10 minutes in the first half, and Young played 11 for the 
Ty is oh banked in by oh Earl Clark. He makes a pair. 32 all, the third tie of the game. There have been four lead changes. Well, when you get a kiss on a free throw, uh, you're not known as a great stroker. Look up. Fields harassed all night. And Dixon, foul called. You know, Fran, I, I think it's pretty simple. Hit the post and look up, and you've got that opportunity to do some damage. I, I think they've had too many people down at this end of the floor. Now look at four guys, Sean, all down at this end. If you can get it and go, you can get a fast break, and obviously, if you don't want it, bring it out and run your offense. You're right. They got somebody in the middle of that press offense mm -hmm. that time. Third foul on Williams. The Louisville Stars have been their best player of late. He has three with a long way to go. Thrown away by Dixon. Nice hands by Smith, though. Shadowing the ball. Look oh, at that. Man. Man. <laughs> That's a 7-3 wingspan right there. That's amazing. The Condor. Nice extra. Dixon nicely off to Blair. He did the work at the defensive end, and Blair got rewarded off the feed from Dixon. The consummate performance, those two trips. That was extraordinary. Williams trying to turn the corner. He had Brown on his shoulder. And gets it again. Blair had to be very careful, fortunate not to get whistled for his third. You got Sam Young at the four now. If I, if I were Pitt Rick Pitino, now I would exploit Earl Clark's ability to dribble the ball. Uh, they were exchanging. Williams a three in the lead again for the U of L. 13 for Terrence Williams. As importantly, that basket allows Louisville to set up the pressure. Whoa. They got a good deflection. No. Nice play by Samuels as well. And nobody in the middle that time. Thing we talked about. Take yep. a look at this press offense now. They did it once. You should do it again. Yep. They get the trap in the backcourt. Somebody should be coming right in there. See, there's nobody in the middle, so they look up the floor, and that's a dangerous pass. Nice. Samuels greeted at the rim by Brown and missed the dunk. Fields running the floor, missed the layup. Blair the follow. What Pittsburgh is? reclaims the lead. Sean, this kid does a lot, doesn't he? I mean, running the floor, carving out some area to rebound. A big guy that gives it all. Leading offensive rebounder in the country, over six per game, Dewan Blair. Williams had to tear him off to Jermaine Dixon. Sam Young missed the three. There's Blair on the offensive glass again. He's fouled on the floor. He's a monster. You know what he does so well? He's great on that backside. Instead of him getting blocked out, he just blocks the defender in. This is Paul Silas like, Bill. Now, don't bring that name up. He had 38 rebounds against me in the Pelester. Paul Silas. A new Pelester record, by the way. And Paul Silas is much too contemporary a reference for Bill. <laughs> well, he's a Celtic, so you'll accept yes. A former Celtic. Once a Celtic, always a Celtic, Bill. With the rings to go along with it. Dixon to the bucket. Speaking of rings, he's hoping for a Baltimore Ravens Super Bowl championship. That's not very popular on his team. Dixon's from Baltimore. And obviously playing in Pittsburgh. A big matchup tomorrow. The Ravens and the Steelers. What a weekend for Pittsburgh sports fans. The Panthers are home Monday night on Big Monday hosting Syracuse. And by the way, Bill Hillgrove, who's announcing the pit game, a talented announcer. Nice run out. <laughs> Uh, we'll be doing the Steelers game. Out of bounds, last touch by Andre McGee. There's Bill Hillgrove. There's Bill, and there's one of the greats of all time. Dan Grote alongside. Big Al, the numbers man. You better explain one of the greats of all time in baseball oh, and basketball. At Duke in basketball, oh, first from the St. Louis Cardinals and Pittsburgh Pirates, I might add. Mm -hmm. MVP in the 1960 National mm -hmm. League. Oh Sam Young drains a three. How about Bill Hillgrove and Dick Grote? In their 30th year together, Bill Hillgrove is 40th year as the voice of the Panthers, and he's been the radio voice of the Steelers since 1994. So this going to be a lot of fun these three days. You think how wealthy they would be if they didn't go out at night. <laughs> if you didn't keep them out at night. <laughs> well, we know Bill didn't pay to help them out. Got to go strong. And he got flat-footed on that day. Yeah. Clark. Oh, that's a good call. Rick Petito doesn't think so, but it really looked like Clark.
Trump wheeled and fired an elbow as he tried to turn the corner. You know, it's interesting. Bill, uh, Rick Pitino doesn't argue very much with officials. Didn't like this one. And Sean, you know, I think I would just let this go. I think it was a little bit of a pratfall. Mm -hmm. May have gotten the arm is what you think. Second foul on Clark. Uh, Sean, it's so nice to have a guy with us that has charm, wit, and personality after who we saddle with every Monday night. But right here, the big fella, and uh, Fran, you've been talking about his wingspan, his ability to deflect, and how about the effort at the other end? Uh, we reward the guy. Guy plays hard on one end, go back to him on the other end. And then he comes down and gets a couple of offensive rebounds. Uh, six offensive rebounds a game. Is that number one, Sean, in the country? Number one in the country. 13 total rebounds per game. Only Blake Griffin, the Oklahoma star, perhaps the best player in the country, averaging more rebounds per game than the sophomore from Pittsburgh, Shenley High School. Juan Blair grew up in a house about 600 yards from Pittsburgh's arena, the beautiful Peterson Event Center. Of course, you know the uh, Shenley High School alumni, people like Mo Lucas. How about Ken Durant? Kenny Durant, yes. is that right? there, the old uh, sound guy? How about Andy, Andy Warhol? Warhol? Yeah, I like that one. Huh? Bruno Sammartino. Oh, cool. What was his hold? He had a great hold. Uh, I might I try know. it on Sean before the year's over. <laughs> <laughs> the neck breaker or back breaker? If it involves a hand over the mouth, I'll try it on you. <laughs> Fields finds Dixon. He thought about a deep three. Tough shot, too. If they look at this rebound with the belly. He got a walk there. Yeah. Young that time. He made a walk, but what an effort he gave. 13 turnovers for Pittsburgh. An unusually high total. Clearly affected by the relentless pressure in various forms from Louisville. I think, you're, I think you're right, Raph, about not being able to go maybe at the freshman Samuels, but if I'm Clark right now, I really try to get something in the lane. And twice he's done it and fed. This time Knowles with the tee up. Three-pointer for Preston Knowles. He has four points for the ball game. Louisville back within three, 15 minutes to go. Number one, Pittsburgh, 16-0 with its perfect record on the line. Third best start in school history. And the post-up worked against the press, and they got plenty of time to maneuver. That shot take. Dixon. His third three of the night. He had nine all season coming in and was shooting 18%. I had to laugh, Sean. I don't see the Big East like you do, but you watch Sam Young on tape, and he's going to shot fake you every time he's crowded, and that time it got another basket for his teammates. Where Jimmy Dixon has these guys so unselfish. And there's that reach in, Sean, number three. And it looked like Blair stumbled a little bit as he tried to establish his position, playing into the Louisville offensive player, and that's three on DeJuan Blair, so he'll come out. And it was when he went out in the first half that the problem was really started for the Pitt Panthers. I defer to you on stumbling. <laughs> oh, so Marvin Samuels just had the pass go off his hands to Biggs, and now Fields. With that early pick, yep. huh? Oh, he got a finish by Biggs. Biggs missed with the left-handed layup. McGee, now Clark. Too strong. Samuels kept it alive. Clark stays with it. He's fouled. So they are active on the glass. I love it. They are mixing it up and competing big time with the Pitt Panthers. And that's three on Gilbert Brown. Fortunate for Pittsburgh that they are a deep team. They're going to need that depth tonight with all the fouls piling up. Yeah, that's why I mentioned, Sean, unless you get the wide open three, I would play everything to the lane and then back out and just keep attacking and try mm -hmm. to see if I can get uh, get a few more guys sitting over with Jamie Dixon. Louisville just 11 out of 19 from the line as Williams returns. Blair still on the bench with his three fouls. Biggs with three, Brown with three. Dixon, Gibbs, and Young two each. Young's played the entire second half without picking up that third. You know, it's not only the guys that have to sit over on the bench, but if you're on the floor with two or three, mentally, you're not going to maybe give it your all. You're going to let a guy slide by you so you can stay on the floor. Now, this is a tough situation now if they front 
They seem to put anybody in the ball. Yeah, Lee Clark on it. Yeah. And off the inbound right in front of Rick Patino. I would front. They got a free safety. If it looks to some fans like there are two Rick Petitos on the bench, there are. His son Richard is an assistant, and the resemblance is striking, and the mannerisms are similar as well. He's really enjoying being along with his dad, of course, learning so much. Providence grad. Studied under Tim Welsh. Dixon. Young out of the corner. Missed a three. Weak side rebound to Williams. Louisville down five under 13 and a half to go. And Wanamaker called for the foul. We'll be in Pittsburgh for Big Monday on ESPN 7 Eastern Time. The Panthers hoping to still be number one and undefeated as they host Syracuse. And on ESPN 2, 7 Eastern Time, the top two women's teams in the country, Connecticut and North Carolina. Big Monday presented by Bud Light. Coach, in this league, you got to have a short memory because whether you win or lose, you come back a couple nights later by a monster opponent. Nice pivot, but not the good shot. You know what's amazing? The styles of play each team presents in a different practice schedule. As that, as that head fake. Yeah. <laughs> I think they read the scouting report at the half because that time Clark didn't go for the fake. Boy, Wanamaker retreated when it looked like he could have come up with that oh, loose ball. Then Sosa took his eye off the pass and it went out of bounds. He was looking up to see what his options were and then lost the ball. Uh, it drives me crazy, guys that don't try to catch the ball with two hands. He just stuck his hand out there. That's usually at the rim that they do uh, that, you know? Not that, that far out from the basket. He played for Mo Hicks at Rice High School. He's playing for Rick Petito. That's that ball with two hands. I know you're getting back into coaching because you have. I take care of those high school coaches. Take care of more high school coaches tonight. Just a lifeline. You never know. You never know. There's still hope for you to return to the sideline. Yeah. Yeah. He's, uh, he's going to be my director of I need, operations. I need a lifeline, but not for coaching. Hey, the restaurant reservations will be yeah. phenomenal. Once they took the peach basket down, that was the end of Bill's coaching career. Young. Rebounded by Biggs and a fresh shot clock and Jamie Dixon Haller's instructions. We don't want to give this team second opportunities. 12-20 to go. Still a five-point lead for Pitt. Fields a little short. Biggs again on the offensive glass. And they don't just jack it up. They get a good shot generally. Young the banker after the strong drive all the way from beyond the three-point arc. Nine points for Young. Timeout Rick Patino. And no pump fake song for that kiss. <laughs> when you're young at heart. A little smooch. Sean, Fran, and Raph, guys. All right, Ryan, thank you. Pittsburgh coming to the end of its second week as the number one team in the country, leading Louisville by seven. These are two of the three remaining undefeated teams in Big East play. Marquette the other. Marquette is at Providence tonight at 9 o'clock Eastern on ESPN2. Hey, it's, if you're Pittsburgh, you got nothing to worry about. After this game, you got Syracuse at West Virginia at Nova and Notre Dame at home. So. Mm -hmm. Easy. A boat ride. Really, when you look at the next five games for just about any Big East team, that's what it's like because so many of them are ranked eight this week. Samuel stripped out of bounds. And that gets us into a media timeout zone. Seven seconds of captivating action followed by another timeout. Band. They have Jenny's number. A lot of people have that number. 8675309, one of Bill's favorites. Pittsburgh leading 4639, their favorite number, number one for the first time in program history. They'll host Syracuse on Monday night, Big Monday. The Orange, a winner at home today against Notre Dame. Oklahoma survived at AM. And Wake Forest now, the only team other than Pittsburgh. Remaining in the country at this level, the top level of college basketball undefeated. Only two. And everybody's starting to tune in on that club. I thought uh, Clemson would give them trouble at Little John. There's a double team. Nice dive, too. He, oh, twice now. Samuels missed the jam earlier and a follow. Sam Young running the floor, and then Clark got back after he missed a short shot to flick it away. Edgar Sosa passed it off. 
to Preston Knowles. Out there with Clark, Samuels, and Williams. Oh. And a sloppy feed by Sosa. Young saw it coming. Has trouble possessing. Dixon, and Fields took his eye off the ball. That's an epidemic at the moment. You know, Knowles should have passed it to the post, and they wouldn't have had a turnover. He was wide open, Clark. He give him the basketball. Instead, the run out. And pretty good recovery here. How about that one, huh? I'm taking those yoga classes. Still a seven-point Pittsburgh lead. Despite the fact they've played a lot of the game with DeWan Blair on the bench with foul trouble, he's still seated with three fouls. And the Pigs with a nice job after that duck in by Samuels. Knowles for three for Louisville. Now what you like about the freshman there, he kicked it out, quick reversal. That allows him to set up that pressure. Wanamaker trouble with the defense. First Knowles, then Sosa. Sosa the miss. Williams couldn't corral it. And it is still the four-point lead for Pitt, but tenuous. Dixon to the bucket. And Dixon made that play by hustling back and getting the rebound. And a quick timeout, or they got a foul. A timeout by Jamie Dixon. What a hustle play by Dixon. And the other thing was, Levance Fields, once he did get the ball right about where we are, he knew he had space and numbers, and a terrific job of running the floor. That's the rebound and then the kick out. Yep, he knows now how many white shirts are back. You see him, he can count them. Tough to get them all, right, when you're backpedaling. A little southpaw delivery. One of the headiest kids in college basketball right there. Out of Brooklyn. It's a very nice school. Yep. It's produced Chris Tapp, Chris Mullen, among others. College basketball. This blockbuster day continues with a nightcap in the ACC. North Carolina, many still believe they're the best team in the country, but two surprising losses already. Trying to avoid being upset at home tonight by Miami. Saturday primetime presented by DirecTV. ESPN 9 Eastern Time beginning at 8. Our coverage starts with college game day. Driven by State Farm. They judge it by the Virginia game. Carolina's back. Yes. They played terrific. Six-point game. Nearly midway through the second half. Louisville down by six with the ball. Williams open for three. Nice little setup. Shuffle cut and then drift. The ball goes the other way. The help defense collapses. He just gets the puppy set. Wanamaker got it over and got it to Fields. How much longer? Not much longer. Will they wait with Blair? He's at the table ready to check in with under 10 minutes to go. Wanamaker wide open. Missed the three. All kinds of contact. Biggs and Samardo Samuels were tangled up, and they call it on Samuels. I think rightfully so, though. Yeah, I, I think Samardo Samuels had that Bruno Sammartino hold right there. <laughs> uh, the backbreaker. <laughs> uh, the backbreaker's in right now, Blair. Because if it doesn't go your way, it's also a backbreaker. Fourth team foul on Louisville, second personal on Samuels. Blair's back in the ball game, and Young makes a three. Woo! Early dagger. You know, if you haven't followed his career, he shot 24% his first two years. Look at this. Again, Sosa a little sloppy and young, the acrobatic dunk. Well, we know he's an acrobat. The incredible read. Sloppy delivery across the top. And Young just soaring, exploding. But all pretty good defense. Oh, this is the play from before. Look at the defense. Sucks in on the roll to the rim. And that opens Terrence Williams. Look at this, though, huh? Send it in. The ability to explode through, play the passing lane, and then the attractive finish. Well, he wears that number 23 because he idolizes Michael Jordan. And that looked like his airness as he went to the goal in acrobatic form. But he, he's one of those guys, Sean, I call a hybrid forward because he's not really a four. He's not really a three. He's kind of like Singler and Damian James of Texas, Raymar Morgan. 
guys that can play both inside and out. You know, you remember Dave the Busher back in the old days. Oh, don't bring in the old days. I'm sure get some sense. The Busher. I'm just dropping. But you take a look at these guys, and Sam Young can kill you both inside and out on the offensive end. Yeah, and I love Joe Krabbenhawk, too. OB, and we were down there a couple of years ago. He was hurt. I mean, he had his foot yep. problem at Oklahoma State, and I love Singler. This kid is big time, and Tyler Smith with the bounce and so many good things he can do, Sean. Well, Fran asked Jamie Dixon before the game, would Sam rather be a three or four? He said he's never expressed a preference. He'd probably rather be a two if he had yeah. his brothers. And he might be. But the next level, Sosa missed the three. And Rick Pitino talks about the need for Sosa to play well if Louisville is really going to play at its highest level. He has not played well tonight. And he's called for a hand check on Levance Field. And it's not scoring that he's worried about, or at least Rick. He wants them to do other things to make people better, improve their ability. Well, well, first foul on Sosa, fifth the team. This is danger zone right now for Louisville. Dixon. Wow. How about that? Was that with the right eventually, was it? Did you, did you ever coach any Baltimore kids? Because I'm going to tell you, they are yeah. tough as nails. Kenny and, House I had way yep. back. They, they play with a chip on their shoulder. Williams, so often is the case. He responds when they really need him. 18 for Terrence Williams. Sosa brings the heat on Wanamaker. They come to double Wanamaker, and he found Fields. Wanamaker shoved by Smith. You know, Sean, it's interesting how each team beats you defensively, but with different styles. Yep. You know, Pitts likes that half court, stands you up, roll you out of the post, pinch on dribble penetration, and conversely, the speed factor, I think, from Louisville. Gets you to cough it up, shoot it quickly. Jerry Smith out with four fouls. Jared Swapshire. Look at this cut. Was in and out very quickly for Louisville. Williams rebounds the miss. Louisville down by eight, nearing eight minutes to go. And another offensive rebound for Blair, by the way. Williams guarded by Dixon. Samuels. Young came to help Blair with the three fouls. And I think Blair just got called for his fourth. He can't believe it, and it didn't look like there's a lot of contact there, and by Big East standards in particular. And he, Tommy Hurry would say to Jamie, he wants to stay in, get him out of there with the four, and it's a smart play. Anytime you reach in, it gives the officials the, the benefit. Here's the double they take. Look at this defense, too, yeah. the rotation for the dive guy. And, it, and what you like there about the freshman, at least he kind of took his time. He let the double come, then it left, then he made his move. Rick Pitino talking about the foul trouble Samardo Samuels has been in lately as Clark makes a long two. He says in every game it seems he gets one foul that's kind of iffy that gets him in the foul trouble. That was really the case working in Pitino's favor there. The fourth on Blair. Wanamaker. They badgered him all night with mixed results. Six point game. Smart right now, take the air out of it a little bit, get yourself organized against the, the zone. Nice cut. Young missed it. Clark the rebound. Louisville down by six. Blair on the bench for Pittsburgh. Well, they really want, you see Williams really wanted to drive, but Pitt just closed it all down. Andre McGee to Earl Clark out there with Preston Knoll, Samardo Samuels, Terrence Williams for Louisville. And Samuels got to lock his guy in there after this screen. And it, really, it looks a little tired right now, Fran. Knoll's a huge three with Wanamaker right on it. We talked about that pressure, getting this crowd involved. Young trying to quiet the crowd. Biggs the offensive rebound. Fields. Rebound Williams. Three to tie now for Louisville. Six and a half oh. to go. They'll take two from Clark. How about the look by Williams? Louisville 
Wilde playing a sweet tune. Uh, their ability in the open floor and Williams is just amazing. Don't you think, Fran? Uh, I mean, he, his vision, a compliment to the backcourt people. Great he, field. He and Clark are so good with the basketball. They're so versatile. They're a tough cover in that regard. You don't have to worry about the guards as much as you do the two forwards. Well, Williams sets people up. We wish that would happen a little more <laughs> often here. <laughs> but I, I just love his feel for the game. I would set you up if I ever got it back. Now that I do, I'll ask you another question. <laughs> Happy birthday, by the way, Earl Clark. 21 years old today, providing himself a birthday present. And that you know what that means? Score. He can go out with Raph tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not responsible. He's got a lot of games left. <laughs> now, you mentioned Dixon playing from Baltimore with a chip on his shoulder. How do you like working with a play-by-play guy with a chip on his shoulder? <laughs> well, it's been a different game when Blair's been in the game and when he's been on the bench. And they're going to continue to play without him, Will Pittsburgh, with his four fouls. They have great faith in Wanamaker to handle the ball against this pressure, and he nearly lost it a couple of times. Young, they need it. They don't get it. Foul on the rebound action against Louisville. McGee underneath with a little bit of a shove. They're dribbling too much, Fran, I think. Sam Young, the senior out of Clinton, Maryland, showing you a little dipsy do. It's not Jerome Lane. Send it home. Jerome. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Infinity, luxury cars that inspire at every turn, and Pacific Life. For insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. Award-winning Louisville dance squad entertaining the crowd here at Freedom Hall. They are terrific. One-point lead for Pittsburgh, trying to remain undefeated, battling relentless pressure tonight from Louisville and also dealing with foul difficulty. Blair has been in foul trouble most of the night. The good news on that graphic is that Sam Young is not on it. He had two in the first half and came out, has played the second half without picking up the third. The question is, when did you put him back in, Blair? I, I, I would go to the five-minute mark, but no longer. And regardless of the score, Bill, because tomorrow Samuels hasn't proven to be an effective offensive player against them. I don't want Louisville to go on that 8-0 run with my guy on the bench, and all of a sudden you're down seven. I didn't make any big bonuses. I'm a little more conservative than you. I, I need to have four minutes. If they're in contact, get to that timeout and then make the decision. A little nickel-dime foul like he had would kill them. And Dixon makes the free throw. The fans were still booing as Dixon went to the line about the call before the timeout that was against McGee. 17 points for Jermaine Dixon. Averages eight per game. And that's a career high now at 18. He had 17 against St. John's, which was their first game as the number one team in the country. And this is the danger of the 2-3. They're not a great shooting team, Fran, but as we were saying, they get in the roll and the move, they start knocking them down. Pretty good move with the 2-3, Sean. Williams missed the three that would have tied it. Samuels had his hand on offensive rebound, but couldn't squeeze it. Under six minutes to go now. They are running their stuff right now. They have really gotten away from their action. And you know what? They can run the stuff, and you got one of the best point guards in the country at the end of the shot clock. Use a great screen from Biggs. Wanamaker air ball from three-point range. Again, three to tie for Louisville. They trailed make. by double digits in both halves. Samuel stripped. Great hands by Wanamaker. Dixon the push all the way to the goal, and he'll go to the line. And, Sean, they went man on the miss, and... A terrific help and something picked as well. And they'll rake you down here. Top side, Fran. Yep, and you know, tomorrow Samuel, Samuels does not get off his feet quickly. He takes so long to get into the move, Bill. Mm -hmm. He's got to learn that as a young player. And you saw that on the uh, miss dunk earlier. Took a while to gather. Follow Knowles his second. He goes out. Smith comes back in with four for Louisville. Dixon. 
missed the first free throw. Mentioned he had a homecoming in their game at Georgetown near his home in Baltimore. Had a tough shooting day. His brother Juan, who plays for the Wizards, was at the game. And after the game, he took Jermaine back out of the court and gave him a shooting tutorial. <laughs> well, that's great. Well, who better? We could fill it up. He had Gary Williams smiling. Whoa, oh Williams way up, but couldn't corral the pass from Sosa. I'm not sure that was the judicious look. I know, particularly a basket so important at this stage. I wonder if Jamie Dixon's going to wait for the under four minute timeout for Blair. Still no movement toward the court from DeWan. Sosa banks it in. Two point game, 440 to go. And under control, too. He didn't charge, got a nice angle, and then the smooch. We used to say about guys like Sosa, he keeps both teams in the game, but he had that big game a year ago up at the Peterson Center. And he had 18 points. Louisville won the regular season meeting at the peak and then lost in overtime in a memorable Big East quarterfinal. Third year in a row, Pitts knocked Louisville out of the conference tournament. Biggs, another offensive rebound of the Young Miss. Young charge. back to the bucket, call for a charge as Samuels took it. And Biggs has really stepped up in the absence of Blair. And this is one of those you got to take the floater. You don't give yeah. the refs a chance. And you like the freshman stepping in. Sacrifice in the body. Jamie Dixon and the top-ranked Pittsburgh Panthers. Undefeated at 16-0. and all. One of only two undefeated teams in the country. Wake Forest the other. That perfect record being challenged by Louisville on its home court tonight. The 20th ranked Cardinals down by two. They're tied now on the dunk by Samuels. Slip to the goal. And Sosa on the assist. Is that amazing? We're in a media timeout zone, you have to think. Jamie Dixon will get Blair in after that. We're down to three and a half minutes to go. Gilbert Brown. Yep. Good play. Deflection. It was deflected. The officials conferred. Brian O'Connell and Pat Driscoll. It'll be Pittsburgh's ball out of the timeout with 14 to shoot. 3.27 to go. 58 all. Sean, when you play Louisville, you don't know who's going to step up. It might be Clark, and this time, Samuel's on the money. Send it in, big fella. All right, Ryan, thank you. Juan Blair went to the bench with his fourth foul with 8.10 to go. Pittsburgh led by 8, 55-47. They've scored only three points since he went out in nearly five full minutes. And he's been held to six points by Louisville and mostly by the foul difficulty tonight. Uh, Rick Pitino, an NBA guy, years ago, will he go at Blair? We'll be curious to see on the offensive end. A lot of college guys play around that. Let's we'll see if he goes after it. 14 to shoot for Pittsburgh. They led by 13 in the first half, by 10 here in the second half. Biggs in that foul circle. And they screen the zone. Field split the defense, got open for a shot. Battle for the board. Out of bounds. Last touch by Dixon, says Pat Driscoll. That's what's going to win it. Whoever comes up with those situations, anything loose, it's got to be yours. And they didn't give up on this jump shot either. Almost maybe a piece on fields. Well, you like the way Sosa has battled down the stretch on both ends. They were running a single double for Smith. They didn't wait. Williams nice. flies to the goal and Louisville leads with under three minutes to go. They got, a, they got a double foul. So they maintain possession. Oh, again, one way. I thought he did you see him put the two fists out? Yep, I did. Yeah. Well, that's a big play. They got offense. <laughs> Fields call for his first foul. It gives it back to Louisville. Sosa with Clark, Smith, Samuels, and Williams for Rick Pitino. And Rick Pitino that coming out of that last timeout set up the ISO on that wing. Let's see if they go to their two horses, Clark and Williams. 
He's a playmaker. Nice double. He's got a that's it. Drag dribble. Whoa. Samuels the cross court pass. Under 10 to shoot. Struggling to get in a good spot. Now they do. Clark fouled by Biggs with four seconds on the shot clock. Well, Blair's got to be careful. He's going to get a T. He went after Brian O'Connell. Well, you got to put the onus on the officials and pound it inside. Take a look if there's any contact up high. Now he got a lot of hands in the face in the chin area. And Blair, very fortunate. Clark on his 21st birthday, a double-double, 18th of his career at the free throw line. Four out of six from the line tonight. <laughs> McGee back in. Sosa to the bench. McGee's a better defender. And on the other end, I think you got to give Blair some touches. He's on the floor, use him. And as you noted earlier, weak side rebounding, if they're in the zone, he is very clever. And before you get to the other end, you got to negotiate this little three-quarter court pressure. This is the largest lead of the night for Louisville. Jamie Dixon wanted to call on Smith as he was defending in the backcourt. Samuel's just playing his guy underneath. It's wide open in the foul area. Two minutes to go. Pitt's perfect season and number one ranking on the line. Biggs tried to dump it down, broken up, scrum, held ball, Louisville ball. Boy, no fake on the ball. Pass to the post by Biggs. He's got to do a better job. He froze the D. He could have gone himself, I think. We talked about how effective Sam Young is in that high post area through the years. Biggs that time, maybe not the experience. Season high, 19 turnovers for Pittsburgh. You know, you, you know what you can do if you're with Patino now? He runs a lot of continuity here. A lot of touches, but they've got to be careful. No helium passes. Those cross court babies. And the other thing is they wait till late. They're unaccustomed to that. May not end up with a good shot. Not a great free throw shooting team. 66% for the year. Sosa stripped by Dixon. Dixon has numbers, never really lifted his head up to spot them. Williams blocked the pass, and then he got landed on, and the foul will be on Louisville. On Earl Clark, I believe. Did yeah. you did you notice Dixon in the open floor here? It's his right hand he's dribbling with. He couldn't blow by with his right hand. And just a heads-up play, typical pinch defense. I want to see now he couldn't get by with the right. We had all kinds of teammates coming from his left, and he never really looked up to see them. So now Dixon at the line, just 61% for the year, but four out of six tonight, and a season high, a career high, 19 points for the junior. First year at Pitt as a JC transfer. Look at Blair, this. the offensive rebound. He missed it. Now we've gotten big time pressure rebounds tonight. Rick Patino wants a timeout. And wants a guard on the floor. Sosa. Well, four of the previous five Louisville games have gone right down to the last possession. They lost by a point to UNLV on New Year's Eve. Terrence Williams had a chance to win it late. Then they beat Kentucky on the bomb from 26 feet by Edgar Sosa. They led all day against Villanova and then survived as the Cats missed three chances. The Villanova Wildcats at the buzzer. They went to overtime when Will Scott's prayer the inner regulation wasn't answered. They scored the last 14 points of overtime to beat Notre Dame. And Rick Pitino talks about the physical and mental fatigue of buzzer beaters. And can you bounce back? This team's going to be Rip Van Winkle soon if they keep having games like this. Now they, they really play tough-minded basketball as well, and now counter it. Defense is the trademark of Pittsburgh. Just good, solid, don't reach in, don't foul. See if you can get them to rush a shot or force a shot. And I want the ball in Williams or Clark's hands at the end of this shot clock with something to the rim. You saw the graphic the last 
win over number one team in the ESPN poll was against Kentucky. That was the last time they played the number one team in the country back in December of 2003. Under a minute to go. The ball on a four point lead for Louisville. And they right out of the timeout, they go at Blair. Five to shoot. Samuels. They need a shot. They don't get it. Yeah, they did. And Clark. Oh, oh. a dagger. Hodges. We're going to look at it to see if it was a two or a three. No question it was good, though, but they also may have to check. He did get it off, but they may, yeah, they they may check that as well. Certainly looked like he got it off. Watch the uh, backboard in the light. Yep, yep, no question. I was looking at both. Nice inside-out pass. They pried a little bit. Samuels made a good decision. It would have been a three last year. Huh? Not this year. Extra front. I don't think Rick Pitino cares right now whether it was two oh, or three. No, you no. know, he just, he's glad they milked the clock and then the, the junior with the big jumper. And the ability of Samuels to be patient and kick it out. That's tough for a young guy. You might panic in that situation. Quick hitters now, Sean. Pittsburgh. 40 seconds to go. Down by six. Can they retain their poise? Young, a deep three. Well, yep, that's the call as two Cardinals were there. Great effort by Samuels and Williams, but they walked. What's interesting now is even if Pitt scores, they're not a full court pressing team. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have to be really, really alert. They'll likely foul quickly. And the mediocre Louisville foul shooting team. Young missed the three. Whoa, looked out, Smith, swinging arms. Trying to give it, they don't get it. Sosa juggles. Well, they need to foul. Yeah, they finally were... Fields does. I think they were trying, look at these guys. <laughs> oh, they were, I think they were trying on the rebound to give the foul, he got free. How about the perseverance? And Jamie, looking on, knows the reality setting in. No quit in these guys here. Sosa at the line. Two out of three today. Seventy-two percent for the year. And and a good, oh, oh, huge oh, break oh, for boy. Pittsburgh as Clark went over the back. You know, John, we don't need it. Rick Pitino says they go to the other end without the clock moving. And John, I'm thinking John Cheney used to move everybody out of there for that reason. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh goodness, nothing moves. You know, a chance for two, you get your press set up, and and, the, and I, I would do the same thing. The other train of thought is if you take those guys off the line mentally, your free throw shooter relaxes, but it's not worth this. Two shots for Biggs. It's the double bonus. He makes the first. He's 64 percent for the year coming in. 14 out of 22. Not a lot of attempts for the senior. First year starter, and like a typical Pittsburgh player, much improved. Uh, Jimmy going small if he makes the free throw just to get more people in the press situation. So with that in mind, he brings Gilbert Brown in, takes Blair out, so Blair won't get his fifth foul. 18 seconds to go, four point game. Louisville was celebrating a moment ago, hugging as if they had won the game. It is not over yet. Got to give the foul right on the catch, yep. And they do. Samuel's foul. So he'll go to the other end. He's 70% for the year, entering the ball game. Tyrell Biggs is fouled out, but he didn't have a choice. He had to foul Samuels. He's two for two from the line tonight. 64-60, uh, just about what we thought. You guys had a, a waltz on Monday night with, with Notre Dame and Louisville, the free-flowing game, not tonight. Well, everything's hard fought with these two. I mean, you don't get an easy basket. They're right up in your suit, as they might say. Uh, just attacking very aggressive. One in the half court, the other all over at key spots on the floor. Pittsburgh's run. The top of the polls for the first time in their 101 year history in danger of ending at least for now after two weeks they had risen to number two in the rankings 
16 times over the years. Never number one until two weeks ago. In jeopardy now. It's still 16.6 to go. Two shots for Samuels. Both teams with a double bonus. And if Pittsburgh goes down, Duke or Wake Forest likely to ascend to number one. My vote would be for Wake Forest. Mm -hmm. I agree. They're playing. So is Duke playing great. Jay had their game last week. Was it Florida State, Sean? Uh, so impressive, too. I think they'll move up, to be honest with them. Wake comes to two, if that's the case. And at this time of year, it doesn't really matter no, anymore. No. It's great that's for the Jamie city. Jamie Dixon has said, it's nice to be number one, but at this time of the year, it doesn't mean much. They throw it deep. Brown rescued it. Blair. Oh, and one, oh and one. why would you do that if you're Louisville? Woo. The pass itself almost was a turnover by Pitt. And just let him score in this situation. That's not how Jamie Dixon drew it up. No, and what a <laughs> save when you think of it. He threw it right at his basket. What a great decision. And Jerry Smith fouls out when he grabs the arm of Blair. Veteran player junior, Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. He should know better than that. That is two terrible fouls by Louisville, trying to protect the lead in the final seconds. One by Clark going for an offensive rebound, and now by Smith when he should have just let Blair go. One possession game, he makes the free throw. Uh, get their pressure set up. I'm sure they'll take Blair out again if he's able to convert. And you've got a couple guys on Louisville that are not great foul shooters. Mm -hmm. Williams about 61%. First free throw of the night. He has come in, making 10 of his last 13 over the last two games. Hi, Archer. And it is a one possession game. 14.6 to go. They'll take Blair out again with the four foul. Looks like a zone. They think try and trap once. Clark trying to get it in. Gets it to Sosa, hit immediately by Wanamaker. Only 1.4 came off the clock there. 64% shooter, Sean. College game day driven by State Farm coming your way next. They'll take you up to the conclusion of this blockbuster Saturday that's lived up to the billing Miami and North Carolina at 9 Eastern time. A small thing yesterday at practice, Rick Pitino worked on getting the ball inbounds versus this kind of pressure. Surprise Blair hasn't come back in with Sosa at the line. Uh, yeah, well, I'm sure it may, it's a two shot foul, so he can get him in right now. Tommy Harrion may be yeah, telling him. Exactly. I think it looks they may call a timeout. There he is. You better get him in quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they waited in fact, a long time. should get him in now. Lucky to get him in. Yeah, there Tom, you go. Tommy was saying maybe you're the, the waste one to get him in. Well, that's going to help to have one of the great assistants in the country, Tommy Harrion. On the staff right there behind Jamie Dixon, head coach at College of Charleston. And only won about 75% of his games yeah, there. Yeah, that's a tough job when that doesn't get it done. <laughs> uh, right now you got your speed dribble and you don't know, want to foul if you move. will keep everybody in front of you. What uh, a tough pass. Not, not what you want and then Blair's out. So Blair fouls out. He had to commit the foul. Jamie Dixon looked at Sam Young and he say, of all the choices inbounding, why that one? Yeah. So he fouls out with nine points. First time Blair has fouled out this year. Mm. When you think of it, they had a lot of minutes tonight without him. And they're right there. So he is a, a, a obviously the key performer for this team, but he's got to play at least that first half of one at the most. I think that's why they subbed early in the game for him. Give a few minutes of a game. And what I like about what Louisville did, and it, and it speaks to the foul trouble, was they were the aggressor with the press, going inside, attacking, and it certainly paid off. And Samuel's dragging, excuse me, Sean, and then the kick out for Clark to knock it down. We'll think back to our pregame conversation with Rick Pitino. We asked him what he thought was important and I said, well, I think they'll try to get Samuels in foul trouble and we'll try to get Blair in foul trouble. Mm -hmm. That was goal number one for Rick Pitino, and that was the key to the game. When Blair went to the bench, the game changed both in the first half and in the second. And Blair caused the problem for himself a few times with his reach in. He remember not really elevating, getting the hands big. McGee the free throw, six-point game. 
Ten seconds to go. Fields Please. deflected by Sosa. Williams, the call for a travel with five to go. People get excited. They don't know the rule, you know? You go down, it's a walk. You get up, it's a walk. Young trying to pump fake again. Fired it off the back of the basket. And we are down to one undefeated team in the country in Division I, and it is Wake Forest. And you got a Louisville, Louisville team. Louisville has won five in a row. The last three over ranked opponents. Only Louisville and Marquette still undefeated now in Big East play. And Terrence Williams Great job. and his mates you to celebrate Louisville's first win over a number one team since 2003. Pretty good, huh? Well, they executed the plan. They did. They absolutely did. I mean, they got them in a rush situation, had them cough it up, a lot of mistakes uh, in the half court by a terrific half court team, Pittsburgh, all because of defense. Final score, Louisville 69, Pittsburgh 63. College game day presented by State Farm is coming up next. Now for Bill Raftery, Fran Fischilla, Sean McDonough saying so long from Freedom Hall. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Now it's down to Chapel Hill for College Game Day, presented by State Farm. Good night, everyone. Welcome to College Game Day, driven by State Farm. That is the Smith Center, affectionately known as the Dean Dome, and the Carolina Blue crowd starting to file in here where they'll paint themselves up and get ready for the game tonight against an upstart Miami squad hoping to make a name for itself in the ACC this year. Glad to have you with us. College game day presented by State Farm. Reese Davis along with Hubert Davis, Digger Phelps, and Jay Billis will take you right up to tip-off between the Tar Heels and the Hurricanes coming up at the top of the hour. But as you heard Sean McDonough say, we're down to one undefeated team in college basketball. Louisville does it again. The Cardinals have been hot in the Big East and Pittsburgh fell after uh, giving up a double-digit lead in both the first and second half, Jay. Yeah, there's one undefeated team in college basketball. That's Wake Forest. But Louisville is undefeated in the Big East, which may be more important to Rick Pitino. Since they lost to UNLV, I think that team has really gotten on a hot streak and they started to figure out who they are. A lot of us picked them to go to the Final Four before the season started. And this is the type of Louisville team we thought this was going to be, a team that could press that could force tempo and whose guards played smart and their guards played smart in this game got Blair in foul trouble that was a huge difference well they didn't panic they start the game going down 10 and they end up going what five for 25 to start the game so that's not going to get you anywhere what was important they stayed with what gets them to where they can get domination they forced Pittsburgh six guys into foul trouble first half especially with Young and Blair on the bench that's when the press worked 10 turnovers in that first half, and they just wore him down. And that's the difference. When you take a look at Blair being on that bench where he can dominate, that led to that 17-3 run where they go up 62-58. Game's over with two minutes to go. You know, I think Louisville did everything they needed to do to win this basketball game. Uh, they created turnovers. And you look at Pitt, this is a team that doesn't turn the ball over. They had 19 turnovers in the game. They kept Pitt off the offensive boards. I mean, this is the best offensive rebounding team in the country. And DeJuan Blair had nine points and only nine rebounds. And you talk about Earl Clark. Yeah, he scored well. Your game player, he had a double-double. But he also put pressure on DeJuan Blair, and he was in foul trouble. So they did an outside in a job on both ends of the floor and you're right Jay those guards are really starting to play better on both ends of the floor Terrence Williams had a big week I mean he did it to Notre Dame on Monday he did it tonight I mean, he has he, Jay he, in his he, head he just <laughs> has things going that's right he goes down that court you weren't there today but he saw Raft and he saw Sean and he got nervous he heard their voice but seriously Terrence Williams has finally matured in big games and made the right shot selection and come up with the big points. Well, instead of having a point guard that's a playmaker for them, it's really Terrence Williams and Earl Clark. 
And Samardo Samuels is starting to play really strong inside. Mm -hmm. You know, I was a little bit critical of him, as were other people, about he would get the ball in there, make a strong move, and then he wouldn't make a strong finish. Well, now he's playing stronger. Rick Pitino wants him to be an above-the-rim player. But, you know, Huber, you talked about the offensive glass and limited Pittsburgh. Louisville dominated the offensive mm -hmm. glass. They got second shot after second shot after second shot in the first half. Now, part of that was because Blair. they got Blair and Young on the, on the sidelines with foul trouble. But they went after the ball. And I'll tell you, they are as good defensively as any team in the country even though they play differently with their black press and their white press and they drop back into that two three zone they're as good as anybody defensively you know Preston Knowles is another guy that's yep. come in off the bench and an outstanding on the ball defender uh, not a true point guard but has been huge in terms of picking up pressure knocking down three point shots so you're right those guards have really stepped up collectively to bring a, a good point and Andre guard. McGee too yeah. gets Andre up McGee under you well. and really exactly. guards the ball uh, well. they beat a number one Louisville did for the first time since beating Kentucky in 2003 but Pittsburgh was number one I'm not sure if everybody was totally sold on them being the best team in the country. We talked this morning about teams tasting their own blood and how they'll react. What did you learn about Pittsburgh from watching this game? Uh, that they're a team that can get to a Final Four and win a national championship just because they lose on the road against a very good Louisville team that's improving every game doesn't mean that they can't reach all of their goals. This is a team that is one of the best, if not the best, defensive team in the country. They can score down low on the post. Dewan Blair, that's his worst game all yep. year, and they shot well from three-point range during the game. A very impressive win for the Cardinals of Louisville over Pittsburgh. They beat number one. Back to Freedom Hall now. Fran Fraschilla with Rick Pitino and Earl Clark. Earl, 11 rebounds tonight in a game that you knew was going to be physical. Tell me about your mindset coming in. Uh, basically, we just wanted to come in the game, dig deep. We knew it was going to be a dogfight. We just tried to hit the glass real hard. And uh, we did that as a team today. Oh, great job. Let me get Coach in. Congratulations. Rick, you told us that one of the keys might be which, which team's post player might get in foul trouble. Blair got in foul trouble. Just talk about how important that was. Well, we were going to take it to him. We know he's very good. He leads the team in steals by reaching around. We were just going to try to win that war. They were going to try to win the war. But I'm really proud of our guys because we couldn't make a bucket in the first half, only down two. And then we came alive in the second half with some big plays. I thought we rebounded the ball exceptional tonight. You, you, you stole my thunder. That's what I was going to ask you next. What, what you were most proud of, but how about Terrence Williams and Clark? Seemed like they gave you great leadership down the stretch. They did. You know, our press was amazing. Major factor in the first half with steals, and we only shot 29%. Imagine if we shoot a different percentage, but there's a reason we shot 29%. They're a great defensive team. Well, congratulations. That's a great win. It was an awesome basketball game. We've had great games at Freedom Hall here. Congratulations. Thank you. Maybe we should stay here every Big East game.